And I've been joined by Bulldog from Team Liquid. You guys already played your first uh, two matches against VP. Uh, one of them you actually won. The first one, however, didn't quite go in your favorite. Uh, let's talk a little bit about picks because there was already something unusual which people out there haven't seen. Uh, for example, the Dazzle pick. It very much looked like you guys went just with a strategy you were already having in mind and not really taking into account what the VP was picking. Is that the case or where did that Dazzle come from? <laughs> Dazzle was kind of just a last minute thing. It wasn't, I mean, I guess it was one of our original, like, we wanted to try them because they had VS and Skyrath as their supports. And we don't want to just let the Skyrath and the VS just get levels and free farm. So we went aggressive for that, and Dazzle was just kind of a last pick. It's a decent hero with Naga, and it's a good hero versus Nakes as well. But uh, just their movement in the game didn't work out. They just out outmaneuvered us. I mean, the game was over by 10 minutes or so, it was really fast. Like already by 10 minutes, they had such a big advantage by ganking mid and stuff. So the second game you won, uh, even though they still had uh, VS, and I think they also had uh, Skyrap and uh, Vengeful Spirit, they had in both games. Um, is that something, I mean, it's not really something we saw VP playing beforehand uh, often. Were you guys surprised by their picks at all, or was that still all right? Uh, not really by the Vengeful Spirit. We've scrimmed them a lot, and they've picked VS before. But um, the Skyrath Mage was kind of a surprise. We haven't really played for much versus the hero. And it did do a lot of work, especially versus the Nyx Assassin. And he's a good hero versus Nyx because of the instant silence. And then um, I, I think the second game, we just uh, we had better. I thought we had better picks and we outplayed them in the lane and some ganks and stuff. Late game, I don't think they could really do anything versus us because we just get three or four BKBs and all the heroes are just going to. All the heroes just do magic damage and we just have BKBs and they can't do anything. So that's how the game ended. Uh, did it did go well for you guys, to say the least. Um, so, of course, there's so many other games ahead. You guys have already been watching uh, what the other teams have been doing. Has there been anything really out of the box thinking so far which really surprised you? Like, that we've seen Bloodseeker, for example, in one of the teams. Um, is there anything which you really would say is innovative and creative now? Um, I think uh, Bloodseeker obviously was confused. And I think Rattlesnake, they picked it also. They picked it to counter OD. Mid, Bloodseeker with PMS and Coiling Blade does a lot of damage, so he can actually outlane the OD mid. Otherwise, I don't think it really has worked out. I think it lost both games. And in terms of other kind of unusual picks, we haven't really. We actually saw I IG pick a really similar lineup to what we run. It's a Tinker, Obsidian Destroyer, and Tree, and then a pushing hero like uh, Silver So that was exactly, we've been using that strat for the past three or four months. So it was kind of unique seeing that strat that we, we love to use also them using it. And um, Alliance actually completely owned LGD and so that was kind of surprising. It's kind of like Alliance is a beacon of the West with Navi right now. And another surprising game is the Navi Fnatic games. I think uh, everyone expected Navi to completely own because they've been doing so well for the past month. And even Fnatic, they went into that game. I don't think they expected to win that hard. Like I thought, uh, Era said like might be a one-one. We were aiming for a one-one. We might lose whatever. We're just gonna go into it and pick do what we do and they just completely owned them. So that was really uh, baffling to see. It really was. It was such a nice performance by Fnatic. So if we look at your group now, um, is there any opponents you would say, like, are going to be really, really tricky going up against, or you think it's actually equal? I think uh, the two hardest teams, actually, I, th I think it's three. I put Alliance, IG, and Tongfu on the same level. So I think any of those three teams are going to be the hardest. And if we... 2-0 any of those two three uh, th those three teams, I think we have a good shot at making the top four of the groups. So that's our aim, 2 0 at least two of those three teams. So how how did it go in general for you guys uh, preparing for TI now? Uh, how did the boot camp go? Where were you guys? Uh, what did you do? I mean, I heard you were in Vegas. So did, did you actually boot camp or was <laughs> what did you guys do there? Well, we had our uh, manager and uh, a few other Team Liquid guys, Hotbid. He's also quite famous in the esports scene. So we, we, uh, we went out, obviously, and but we uh, practice every morning. The thing about the Western time schedule in the U.S. is the really um, the, the time that Dota teams scrim are usually um, uh, along the, e the European time schedule. So we would start scrimming anywhere from 7 o'clock in the morning till we play till maybe 2 o'clock p.m. So we have the entire evening off to maybe watch replays or analyze games that we lost or people would just go out and do their own stuff and relax. So... 
how, how much relaxing time do you guys actually need? I mean, I know there are some teams which just say like we, we power through it now, we just go and practice, do nothing else but that. Do you think that's healthy or do you think you actually need uh, a certain amount of hours a day where you can just do your own stuff and get your mind off Dota? I think you need to relax. At least for us, I think we need one. Because uh, if, if we're playing Dota all morning and then in the afternoon as well, just playing it again in the evening is just... It just it's not even like it gets tiring. It's, it's boring playing the same thing. So we usually took some time off in the evenings to go out or watch some TV shows like Dexter or something together. And then we'd come back in the evening and people would go play pubs with their friends and stuff. All right. So uh, one last question maybe uh, about the game at least. And then I have some other questions for you. <laughs> um, is, is there a, a special person in your team who actually comes up with the strategies and everything or is that always like a joint decision by everyone or what you want to go for uh, how, how does the whole thing work out also are you are you doing those decisions whilst playing like just trying out new stuff or are you actually sitting down together and, and, and start talking theory um, I think uh, coming up with strategies it's we, it's like a team basis we all give our own input it's mostly me and Fluff and uh, TC that do the strategies and occasionally we'll ask uh, Korak or Mike will put their input in. But coming together, we just test out stuff in scrims. Like, I'll say maybe this hero would work here, like, or that matchup. Like, two, three weeks ago, we started running, uh, I was experimenting counters to OD mid, and it took me a while, but I finally found one in Razor. I just, I was running, running this uh, North American player called RTZ, and I found a 1v1 matchup that worked really well. And uh, we use it as, like, I had seen uh, Orange do it once before, but it was quite a long time ago. They you did Wisp Razor in mid, and it was a dual lane versus OD. So I thought, okay, Razor's entire concept feels like he can be OD mid. So we experimented, and then I think we used it in a few scrims and the matches, and uh, it became kind of famous in the Western scene. At least people started picking uh, Razor to counter OD. So we actually did that versus VP today, Razor versus yeah. OD. Yeah. Well, okay, so you already gave myself the transition into it. So. The community calls you Bobo the Inventor. <laughs> As you have claimed that many things you apparently invented, uh, you just gave an example of like experimenting with stuff. How much of the things which are rumoring around that they come from you are actually from you? Um, I'd like to say Tinker is mine, uh, <laughs> meaning like not the actual hero. Uh, uh, I think it was a year. I think it was a year ago, around this time, like maybe a year and five months ago. Uh, Tinker was my favorite hero from Dota One. And it was always the same build. People would get their first two spells, a laser and a missile. But in Dota 1, it, in Dota 2, it seemed like the March at that time was doing insane amounts of damage. And it was actually, it was bugged back then. So then I started b uh, experimenting builds. And I figured out the, the 114 build where I just get laser in the, the lane. And I've built on upon that build from now. But I got laser and then one missile. And then I level up a March and then I'd max the missile. So I have 144. And then uh, what happened is, and it was in our game versus Navi. I was on EG back then, and Milk and I, uh, we Milk, um, stacked the Ancients at the time. I told him to stack it with Venge, and then I had like, 13-minute bots uh, blink and then Soul Ring, or I think it was 13 minutes of bots and bl uh, Soul Ring and Bottle. But ever since then, people just changed their Tinker build, and I also started getting Blink first on the hero, and just whenever we, whenever Tinker wants to just push lanes, I just blink shift blink into the woods and i think people started doing that as well because before that people always used to do the e-home die build which is getting four staff first but i i started getting the first uh, the blink, blink dagger first so I'd, you just never die you endlessly split push so you definitely claim those two inventions for yourself okay uh how about the off laner clockwork from you like blocking minions uh with the uh cogs is that also yours or did you just claim that i think i claimed that one i'm not sure if that was me or not but <laughs> I think I was the first one to do that in an official match where... You were the first one to claim it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say if you do... If whoever does it first in an official match gets claim to it. So since I got Tinker in the official match and then people started following it, I'd, I'd like to claim own to that. It's like the Guinness World Record. Like, it's half official. Like, someone in the world may have done whatever it was in that book, but I was the, f the first one to do it actually in a documented match. So, um... I think, what was it? Uh, the clockwork. I used to just... People, whenever they used to offlane clockwork, they used to get rocket level one, and just kept keep rocketing for CS. And but I just thought in Dota t Dota uh, two, there was a bug where you could cog like all four heroes and all four units. Right now, it's really hard to do that, but before it was really easy. 
So I used to just cog the creeps like twice, once near the tier one, tier two tower, and once near the tier one, and I'd get full waves of experience. So it was kind of, it was really imbalanced back then, and they fixed it since then, but yeah. I'd like to clear on to that as well. All right, so we give you that one. <laughs> and I very much hope for many more inventions to come. Thanks a lot for taking the time, and of course, good luck in the tournament.